This is 365 Sports. Thank you for being here today. Caleb Downs, of everybody that has entered the transfer portal anywhere, at any time, perhaps the most talented of everybody, including some quarterbacks, of course, and others. Caleb Downs, high level, freshman All-American, Alabama, entered the transfer portal, and yet we'll have more on Alabama in just a second. Yeah, this one... You know, the, uh, we were in. Uh, it was announced last week that Nick Saban was leaving. He had said that the two hardest people to tell were Malachi Moore and Caleb Downs. Uh, and you know, the I guess the school of thought is that he might, you know, go to where Travis Robinson is at Georgia, and that's probably where he'll go. But now that he's in there and he's a freshman All American and he was so good, things could get weird. Uh, and you never know who's gonna. I mean, so you never know who's going to come out of wor the woodwork. There's probably no woodwork. It's a, a, like his phone probably hasn't stopped ringing or or text messages going off since people found out he was in the portal. Yeah, one of the uh, highest, most rated, uh, talented players to enter the portal in this uh, particular era of college football. And uh, a stud, I mean, a, a superstar type of player that has a lot more potential and is probably just basking in the – uh, glow of phone call after phone call and offer after offer and everything else that comes with being a star player jumping into the portal at, at this stage of the game. So, yeah, Caleb Downs, just one of many that are uh, leaving Alabama now at this point post saving. It's been fascinating to watch that. You wonder when the bleeding will stop, but these um, – you know, few days that keep going by, it just seems like it's just slowly trickling out more and more. And I'm starting to wonder who they have left at this point. But this was a, you know, a name that was definitely at the top of the list of the, the most interesting because you know that once he makes that decision, if it is to enter the portal, then every school in America is going to be coming after him. And that's what we're about to see because, yeah, Caleb Downs is, is a very busy man right now. He is, and uh, he can go anywhere he wants. He could have done that coming out of high school. So here's the secondary from Alabama. Here is who they have, and, and that doesn't include Downs. This is from earlier, Kyle Henderson. He's now in the portal. You have Pope to Georgia, Ricks to AM, Little to FSU, Kentucky gets Story, three players headed to the NFL, uh, a couple of them early entries, Arnold, Kool-Aid, McKistry, and also then Key. And then their coach, uh, Traveris Robinson, very popular, great recruiter. He's at Georgia. And Nick Saban's specialty was secondary. Mm -hmm. So they not only lost their coach that they went to go play for, the head coach that they went to go play for, but a head coach who's always been very much involved in the secondary. Yeah, it's just part of the transition. I mean, this is going to be a little bit of a nightmare for them for a little while, and it's uncharted territory because a lot of the Alabama fan base, not all of it, most of it, but uh, a good number of – the Alabama fan base have never known anything other than Nick Saban uh, because he was around for so long. So, yeah, this is uncharted territory and uh, just fascinating more so than any other coaching transition just because of how long in the he was there and the foundation that he had laid and just the consistency in recruiting. That's one thing with Kalen DeBoer, if you look at you know what deficiencies are there, what concerns are there, one of those things that you do get worried about is can he recruit at the top level like Nick Saban did year after year after year? And you would think with NIL – and just Alabama's brand that that would most mostly be the case, but there is still an art to it, right? And it's not just the coach, but it's the staff. And do you have the right chemistry and the right mix of guys and the right pitch and all those things? And that's something that's going to be fascinating because Alabama will throw some bags at guys and they'll throw some NIL money out there, but it doesn't guarantee that they're going to continue to rake in the same classes that they always did. So, yeah, there's a major talent exodus going on. Uh, they were accustomed to that because every year they turned over like 10 guys to the NFL, but this is a bit different because it's guys that are – going other places. And I know that they've lost guys in the past. Uh, you know, JoJo Earl, or I mean, a number of guys have left and they've just kept reloading. But this is different because Saban's not sitting in the background, kind of the architect of it all. This is out of their control entirely. And so uh, this is, you know, really interesting to watch and just how many guys end up gone when all is said and done. You see right there, a lot of them not taking very long at all once they enter the portal to make their decisions. We'll see on Caleb Downs and some others. But yeah, it's it's a kind of a mess right now, this whole roster thing. So you wonder if DeBoer is going to have that, that magic touch to be able to just reload the talent because that was the thing, man. If Alabama 
was deficient this area. They were still as talented, if not more talented, top to bottom on the roster right. than everybody in America. Somebody, go ahead. And I'm that's sorry. not necessarily going to be the case any longer. Somebody tweeted at me when I put that up. They went, oh, welcome to the real world. Well, yeah. and th- yeah. that's, look, Alabama is now getting the fans, like Craig, you said, that don't know. I mean, there's a whole generation of fans that don't. Even the, you know, ones who were alive when he wasn't the coach might have been really young, right? Yeah. That don't. Like, if you're an Alabama student right now, you don't really know a, a time without Nick Saban as the head coach of Alabama and it is a testament tried and true thing about college football yes the program is important the institution and the history is important you can't belittle it but it doesn't matter that history doesn't matter if the coach isn't elite so you know even Alabama the most storied college football program in history until Kalen DeBoer proves that he can win there, like Bear Bryant, like Gene Stallings, like Nick Saban did, then it's just another place with a good history. Yep. And that can change quickly. But yeah, you're I'm not saying he can. I'm just saying that that's what he's there's up There's another player, a freshman All-American, Porter, a Proctor, Jaden Proctor, a starting offensive lineman. He's gone. Uh, transferring. And Kennington Lloyd Smith the third, by the way, will join us at 3.30 in the coverage of Alabama and what's going on with them. Caden Proctor. Caden Proctor. Uh, yeah. Proctor, excuse me. Uh, here's a depth chart of Alabama that was put up by Bo Elliott. He's uh, with CBS Sports. There are even some... Bud Elliott. But, uh, Bud Elliott. There are still some names that aren't even crossed out that have left. That's their two deep from last season. Now, you're going to have players because they're going to always have a lot of players that go to the NFL and some... But that does not include everybody else that has now entered the portal or is leaving. That's Alabama. They still have a lot of talent, but that gives you an idea. For a second, now look look at Washington. Washington, where DeBoer was. Those that are yelled out, they're leaving. That does not include now Brailsford, their starting center. That does not include, um, let's see, uh, Bernard who was their backup wide receiver that was going to get a lot of playing time because everybody else is gone, that does not include backup cornerback or defensive back Vincent Holmes. So those two of the four teams. Jeremy Bernard entered uh, an hour ago. That's what I said. I thought you said that didn't include. Okay, no, my well, no, no, the, the, yeah, no. This the, person hasn't scratched the, it out yet. Okay, they have gotcha. not scratched it out yet because it was recent. And that, that's what I was mentioning. That does not show his name being scratched out yet. That's from Jeff Schwartz. Gotcha. So there's their depth chart. One was Alabama, this is Washington, both affected by Nick Saban retiring and DeBoer leaving for Alabama. Yeah, the thing with Alabama, too, is that they, um, you know, all these other coaching jobs that have come open, there's been some big-time programs, you know, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, over the last couple years, and their rosters get picked apart pretty clean, but I think Alabama's is just so talented, and they have so many high-rated players that were recruited by so many of the other big-time schools and just various other schools that it just makes their buffet line now way more appetizing than probably any other job we've ever seen with the roster that's come open. I mean, would you all agree with that? Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, because Washington's roster opens, and you're like, okay, great, who can we pick apart? Well, all, most of the, a lot of the guys you wanted are, are gone to the NFL. A lot of them, as you see crossed out there, are going to be headed elsewhere as well, and that, that'll be you know, something that a lot of teams want to pick apart and look at. But that Alabama roster in particular, just from the depth standpoint, the, the stars standpoint, um, it's, it's unique in its own, own little category. And so, yeah, there's a lot of teams that are feasting on that roster right now and will pick apart Washington's. Uh, and you just wonder what's left over when all is said and done. So, yeah, the the fun of being introduced, if you were Jed Fish or Kalen DeBoer, that was all great. But, man, as soon as that last press conference or whatever your last obligation was, you had to be on the phone and in that locker room and going to work to try and salvage what you can. And as we see, both have a lot of work to do because most of their roster is already gone, and it's been less than a week. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing to watch how the turnover – occur so quickly now uh, with the rules. But I you know, think it's great for the players to have that opportunity. If you 
Didn't expect a coaching change that you can go move on, but it does make for some chaos. Yeah, he, uh, go ahead. Alabama's roster, like if you wanted to compare it like restaurant wise, you know, somebody else, you know, leaves and you get, okay, that's good. You know, they might be like a subway. That's like a Morton Steakhouse giving out free meals. Like yeah, when it's no, open, you're no, just, yeah. it is. It's just it, there like going. All of it's prime beef. Yeah, everything's one, great. One of the things about all of this is that the Traveris Robinson story, and I remember, I don't remember who the name was, but somebody, when, when Kirby Smart got him, to leave Alabama, somebody uh, that covers the Southeast uh, SEC said, this is a godfather move because of what it could also represent. I'm thinking, okay, he's a secondary coach. He's a good recruiter. But Saban leaving is the major reason the dam broke. But Robinson is somebody that if they offered him maybe a co-defensive coordinator position or associate head coach, perhaps he stays and some of these don't go. But that's where they are. Here's another one. DeAndre Robinson, who signed with Texas and then Bo Davis left. Garrett Ross, thoughts were he would end up where Bo Davis left, right, for LSU. Yep. That was but the hope. no, late yesterday evening, there started to be trending towards Florida. This so is that appears to be what he will do. This is a clearly, clearly a kid I would not be friends with. Why do you say that? Texas and then Florida? Florida? We yeah. don't have anything in common. Yeah, <laughs> no. no. Yeah. You wouldn't see eye to eye on much, I don't no, think. No, yeah. I'm sure. I mean, look, he's a really good player, and, and good luck to him in Gainesville if that's where he does uh, ultimately wind up. But, yeah, I thought – I mean, they let him out of the of the letter of intent. Uh, I thought that was going to be to follow Bo Davis. But, mm. uh, you know, uh, obviously he's off to, uh, to uh, another pasture. Kendrick Blackshear. Great player in high school at Duncanville, five-star player. He's headed to Austin. Uh, he was at Alabama. Now, his career has not met expectations. He's been dinged up at times, but also has not been able to make much happen on the field. 25 tackles in three years, a forced fumble, one fumble recovery. He had a quarterback pressure last season, 16 tackles. He's had some injuries. He's back to the home state of Texas UT, of course, is filling up with the portal. They've had a couple of leave, and some have gone to the NFL. They seem to be plucking who they want. This is a young man that they need somehow to get him to work. Not that they need him to start, but to see if he can reach the expectations coming out of Duncanville. Well, this is one you want. Um, I almost like it, and I know he's an Alabama player, but his stats, you know, are not like they didn't get the best Alabama linebacker. They got a guy that had a ton of potential uh, that's coming back to his home state. I look at guys like this, like Juco transfers. Like, you, you're bringing this guy in. He doesn't have much eligibility. You want him to be able to play right away, and you hope you have a fit that's better for him than where he was before uh, with Pete Kwiatkowski in that defense. So we'll see uh, how it goes. But, yeah, he is not, he's not met those, those expectations at Bama. No, um, but the hope is that you can get and scrape whatever he's got uh, in the tank and, and have it maximized there in Austin, so we'll see. But, uh, you know, a, a nice enough pickup on paper. I, I don't consider it to the level of a Silas Bolden where there's a bit more proven there, but I know that he was a big-time recruit a couple years back, and everybody in the country wanted him, including Texas at that time, and I seem to remember A&M being hot and heavy with him. and I mean, everybody was, I suppose. But, yeah, um, you know, not coming in with – the greatest stats in the world, but doesn't mean he can't make a great impact next year. So, yeah, that's a name, if nothing else, and they need uh, to replace a lot of guys. So that'll go and chip away at, at what they need to get done on that little to-do list this offseason. But they've been very active. They've certainly been, uh, you know, circling along with various others over that Alabama talent pool. And so they, they land a guy, and they'll probably land some uh, some others. And they also got the, the, the wide receiver uh, as well, right? Um, Bond. A Bond, Isaiah yeah, Bond. That, that was right into the weekend, so, yeah. So, yeah, so they, they've they now a couple years in a row, Sarkeesian uh, going back to his old stomping grounds and grabbing players off that roster. But this is a little bit different, obviously, and, and he's got something to prove. So we'll see if he can get that done. 